Hey, good morning, guys. I uh, appreciate everybody being here. Yeah, this is always uh, an exciting day for us as the coaches with the, the team coming back today. I know you've already had a chance to speak to Sark, so uh, I'll open it up for questions right away. Um, Kyle, not many people have the luxury of bringing back five starters, but I'm kind of wondering the guys behind those five, you know, how are they taking this challenge to try to earn playing time? And do you have to get creative to try to get these guys, you know, first team reps? It's unique for sure. And there's, uh, I think only one other time in my career was able to bring back, you know, really six players that have started games. You know, Cole started, DJ started, so that, that's, that's a little bit unique. Uh, but I feel like right now, after going through the spring, and then the part of the summer that we are able to see, we can't see all of it, but we're able to see some of it where we can work with the guys. Um, I feel like we've got eight guys right now that we can win major college football games with. I think NATO and Cam have had excellent off seasons along with the six who've already started games for us and, and helped us win games. So I think right now we're at eight. Uh, you'd love to get to 10. I can't tell you that you know, very often in my career I've been able to do that. Uh, but we've got other guys that are coming along also, the guys like Connor Robertson and then some of the freshmen that were here early, the early enrollees. But, you know, the, we'll, we'll, we'll wait on that just a little bit with Connor coming off the wrist injury and, um, and the younger guys being kind of new to the program. But I do feel like right now we've got eight. And ultimately playing time will be earned. You know, starting positions will be earned all across the board. I know everybody likes to look at preseason depth charts, but I've told the players for a long time, to me, a preseason depth chart is really just a starting point because in the beginning of training camp, everybody gets the same amount of reps. Everybody's running the same plays. So everybody has an opportunity to really show us how high of a level can you play at. Uh, you've known Coach Sark for a while now. Kind of where has he improved the most as a head coach? And then also he talked about the continuity on the staff. How much does that help you? Yeah, I'll start with the, the latter first. You know, we're, again, like to bring back – most of your position coaches uh, after having a year like we did last year was a blessing for us uh, to have CJ coaching the wide receivers to, to come to Texas from the NFL was a blessing for us and I think is going to be really good for our players. I think he's got a, a different perspective having coached in the NFL that is going to be good for those receivers because ultimately that's where they want to play. I think that's going to help those guys. Uh, we definitely have a lot of continuity on offense, you know, from Sark to myself to Jeff Banks to AJ. Uh, it's it's and then with Choice being with us last year and now with us again, you know, that part's been great. So I think continuity, although not necessarily uh, the the most important thing, I think it is a positive for the players. So we feel really good about that part. Uh, when you talk about Sark, I've had the unique experience of of having him watched him coordinate in the NFL and how to handle that kind of room and then to go to Alabama together and watch him coordinate at the college level and saw how he kind of handled that experience and now watching him as a head coach you know I, I will say what I'm most impressed with him is I don't know that I've ever worked with somebody who has a connection to the players the way he does and I feel that every day uh, I see the way the players interact with him and having sat in that chair, I know how hard that is to create. So I would say, you know, instead of going in the direction of what's his biggest improvement, I think our program has improved because of his connection to those players on a daily basis. You got back center, Will. Hey, Coach. You just said a minute ago, earned. Can you talk us through those competencies that you're looking for in your players? They're starting to earn those positions, the first, second, and third positions. And who has surprised you um, throughout the summer uh, moving into the fall that you're excited about? I don't know that anybody has surprised me. I, we've got pretty high expectations. So I expect them to come in and play at a high level. I will say I am impressed with this new freshman group. Uh, PK, Kojo, Stroh, Gooseby, Chapman, I am impressed with how they have absorbed and learned the offense. Now, that doesn't mean that they can necessarily translate it full speed just yet, but they're, they are ahead of where I thought they would be at this point mentally, and that will serve them well now as we go back into training camp and we go back to install one. Uh, when it comes to like earning the positions, to me, it's about how high of a level can you play at and how consistently can you play at that level. I, I've used this. I say there's nothing more valuable in life than consistency. It's hard to play a player who 
is flashes one minute and then you don't know what you're going to get the next minute. It's hard to put that guy in the game. But whatever level of player is at, if I know I'm going to consistently get that level of play, then I definitely I can say, all right, here's a role that that player can fit into. And we certainly have some players that have shown they can play at a high level, whether it's Kelvin Banks, whether it's Jake Majors, whether it's Christian Jones, Hayden Connor. I can go through the whole list, Cole, DJ. They've all shown they can play at a high level. Now what I'm looking for with those guys and with <clears> – <throat> NATO and with Cam and with everybody else in the room as a starting point is how consistently can you play at that level day after day after day because ultimately you're going to perform the way you perform in practice. Front center, Roscoe. Um, what is it that makes Kelvin Banks special specifically from a technique standpoint um, and what can you do to take that next step this year? He's a very physically talented player. He's got size, he's got speed, he's got change of direction, he's got stop-start ability, balance and body control. He's got all the, the tangible things that you kind of check the list off when you're looking for a player, whether you're recruiting or whether you're drafting, whatever it is. He's got all those. But I'm telling you what makes him special is his mindset. As much success as he has had this early in his career, he works as hard as any player on our team every day to perfect his craft. And that's ultimately what creates the best players, the guys who ultimately get to play on Sundays. So to me, that's what separates him. Because there, there are other players out there that have the size, the speed, the length, all the, all the tangible stuff. But mentally, they don't have the mental toughness or competitive maturity to go out there every day and work to get better, regardless of the success they've had in the past. That, that's ultimately what separates him. I know it probably seems like you've got tackle figured out, but what is if there is competition in the interior three spots, what does that look like and the specific players you have working in those spots? Yeah, I'd say there's competition everywhere. I don't, I don't feel that way. Like, I, don't, I don't go into a season and feel like, all right, hey, we've got this figured out because one of my responsibilities to Sark and one of my responsibilities to the team and the program is to make sure that I put the best five players on the field, regardless of who they are, and figure out how it is I have to do that. Uh, but we do have quite a few players that are going to play on the inside. You know, Jake's going to play center, Connor's going to play center, Cole Hudson's going to play center. Jaden Chapman played center in the spring. Uh, Cole's going to play guard, DJ's going to play guard, Hayden Connor's going to play guard. Hayden Connor played center in the spring. So we've got a lot of interchangeability with these players. And that position flexibility is going to help those guys as they go on in their careers too. But it helps me as the coach to be able to say, okay, here ultimately are what I feel are the best five or the five guys that give us the best chance to win as a collective group. Now, where do the pieces fit? You know, we'll figure that out a couple of weeks from now. Kyle, what, uh, how close are you to having 10 guys who could play at a starting level? And how, how can Paul Christ help what, what you're trying to do? Um, We're not close to having 10. We've got eight. Um, those other guys have a lot to show. You know, so they've got a lot to prove um, as we get into training camp. I've got a, a tremendous amount of respect for Paul. Uh, when I spoke to Sark before, before this whole thing happened and he mentioned the possibility of it, I was 100 miles an hour in that direction. Um, I've had the chance to coach against Paul in two different places when he was at Pitt and when he was at Wisconsin. I think he's a, an excellent offensive mind. And, and I think what makes him a good fit for us is – he believes in the things that we believe in as an offense, even though he did them a little differently when he was at Pitt in Wisconsin. He believes in running the ball. He believes in the play action game. So when you bring somebody to your staff, it, it's critical. It's not just, okay, are they a good football coach? Because there's a lot of good football coaches, but if they're really going to have an impact and they're going to be able to help you, they have to have the same kind of core value of beliefs in terms of how you play the game. And Paul definitely does. So I think that'll be a, a big bonus for us as an offensive staff. Uh, Coach, you spoke about Sork's connection with the players being uncommon. Uh, clearly, that's intentional. Can you give me a story or a few examples of when you've looked over and you've seen him creating that connection and it's clicked in your mind, like that's how it happens, that's how it's formed? I don't know that like there's one example. It's really it's, it's a daily basis kind of thing. But I, but I think what you can point to is look no further than 
if you say, all right, you know, I think every team right now with the portal has got players that are coming to the program, they got players that are leaving. But really, for us, we have not had very many, if any, players who have moved away from Texas who were really having a real impact on the field. Some guys have moved away looking for more playing time where maybe they didn't see a window of opportunity. That's understandable. That's probably one of the good things about the portal. It allows players to do that. But you see other programs where players who have had an impact leave anyway. And I think part of the reason that has not happened here is because of the connection that Sark has with these guys. Hey, Coach. Uh, last season, you guys didn't have a, a passing play that was over 50 yards you know, at all. It, it, it was the only team in the Big 12 that wasn't able to do that. What's the key for you guys to kind of connect on the deeper passes uh, this season? Well, I think for us, you know, having – you say, I know people say we have 10 returning starters on offense, and I think that that's, that's great. That's good. We like that. Um, but the players that are not here – Bijan and Roshan, to me, both starting caliber players for sure. Bijan being a really a transcendent player. The first thing is we're going to have to be really efficient running the football. And we're going to have to make people defend the run because that, that's part of it. Now, we were able to do that last year. So the next part becomes, all right, we have to make sure that we are protecting the quarterback the way he needs to be protected to allow the receivers to get down the field. And then when the ball is in the air, we got to make contested catches. So we got to make good throws and contested and contested catches. So I don't see it as a responsibility of the quarterback or a responsibility of the running back. I think that's a responsibility of all 11 players on the field to create those type of opportunities. We are certainly going to call those plays. There's no question about that. Those plays are going to get called. And now we have to 11-man execute those plays to be able to have the 50-plus yard completions that I think this offense is used to having. Kyle, uh, when it comes to Sark, he, he mentioned something earlier. He said he tries not to sit still. And we're just talking, you were just talking about Coach Christ. I know Coach Patterson came in last year. It seems like he's very willing to bring in guys who will have an impact. I'm curious, how have you seen that mentality, that willingness to bring in guys, maybe with previous head coaching experience, help this program? Yeah, I, I believe in it. Yeah, you know, you're you're talking to somebody right now that as a head coach, I hired Ralph Friedgen to be my offensive coordinator. I hired Ron Prince to be my offensive coordinator. So I, I was very much in favor of having other guys on the staff that had had head coaching experience. I think it only helped as you were trying to navigate the week and make decisions on game day to have somebody else who had who has had to make those decisions before. It, it definitely helps to be able to bounce those ideas off of them. And sometimes you get a different perspective on things, you know, a different way to do things, a different way to do training camp, a different way to run a drill. So I think those things have been excellent. Now, how that manifests itself this year, you know, the, it really has to be in the game planning portion because people in that role are not allowed to coach on the field. So really it's more about the advanced scouting, the, 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 uh, the thoughts in the game plan. So, I, again, I think Coach Chris has been around enough good offense that he'll be able to add to that for us. Eric and Son. Yeah. Coach, it's got a question for you. The, of the eight guys you feel confident about going to this year um, up front, can you talk about what they do well specifically in the run game? And the second part of that question is, will what they do well play a factor in who takes precedent in that running back competition? You, you talk about the running backs or the offensive line? Uh, of the eight players you have up front, the offensive right. line, can you right. talk about what they do well as far as in the run game, run blocking? Sure. And then the follow-up to that is, will what they do well play a factor in the running back competition? Uh, I don't think we have running backs on it. Again, I'll, I'll start in the back and work back to your first question. I don't think we have running backs in our program right now that I, I look at and I say, okay, this guy is a gap scheme runner. This guy is an outside zone runner. This guy has to be a perimeter, you know, pin pull, toss crack type runner. I, I don't see that. I, I think those guys have versatility. Um, might we accentuate some things over others? Sure. That's when you have multiple players at a position, you, you do that. Um, but in terms of the offensive linemen, I think right now the bodies up front look better than they have at any other point since I've been here. Um, I think a guy like Hayden Connor has completely transformed his body from two years ago when I first met him. He's a much more athletic player now, which allows us to do more things. You know, you don't, we don't have to go into a game plan and say, all right, 
we really want to run this play where the guard pulls, but I don't know if we want to pull this particular player. I, I don't feel that way. I think we've got athleticism and power up front at different positions. So um, will it play a factor in the running back? I, I don't think so. You know, what our guys, I think our greatest strength as an offensive line right now is versatility. I think we've got the versatility uh, to be a good pass protection unit and also be a powerful run unit when we need to be. Yeah, Kyle, on sports last year, what you feel like y'all did well in the offensive line and what you feel like you needed to work on more? Well, I, I think, you know, we've had good production in the run game for two years. I think when you just look at our offensive line, we've said this before, like, we need to be, we need to play at a more consistent level in the interior of our offensive line. I think we made a big jump at tackle last year. I thought Christian made tremendous improvements um, playing right tackle last year. Kelvin did it and came in and did a nice job as a true freshman. So we felt like we made real improvements there. Uh, Cam will give us depth, depth that maybe we didn't have last year and we're fortunate to stay healthy and didn't have to get tested. So now we'll have a little bit more depth at that position and more competition, which we all want. Uh, but we didn't get the consistency of play inside that we really felt like we needed to be a top tier team. So I think for us, that's, you know, is it a focal point? We, we want every player in the program to get better every year. So that, that's not, it's not necessarily that it's a focal point. We just. We identify that as something that we know we need to do to be the kind of offense that we should be. Did they all lower their body fat by a big percentage? I wouldn't say they all did. I think Hayden was probably Hayden's was probably the most dramatic when you when you look at his body. From again, I'm I'm remembering him when I first met him because he was recruited with the prior staff. So, but he was early in So I remember when I got here in uh, in late January before the ice storm hit. I met him, <laughs> and uh, I remember what he looked like. I said, "Okay, he looks like a freshman." Well, now he looks like a mature upperclassman what an offensive lineman really should look like. And he's moving, and he, it's showing up in his play. Coach, I have a question for J about Jake Majors. Last season, uh, Coach Sarkeesian said the offense runs through him. We saw that you know he kind of set the tone for the offensive line. What's it like to be his coach, and what does he mean to the team, and what does he bring to that front line? He's a, he's a lot of fun to coach. He really is. He's a, he's a football cyborg. He loves the game at an elite level. Um, he'll send me videos that he sees online that people post about offensive line, and he'll ask me questions and, and things like that. But he comes into the game plan every week with great questions. He, he's a phenomenal communicator. You know, the position, I don't know if I've spoken to you guys about this, but I have spoken about this in the past. Like, the position of center is much more than a physical skill set. It's a personality. You have to have the right personality to take responsibility for everybody on every play. And I tell them that. If somebody doesn't know what to do up front, it's on you. It's your job to be me on the field. Because in practice, I can yell from 20 yards away and get somebody right. In the game, when there's 100 plus thousand people in the stands, I can't yell from the sideline. You have to handle it. So he's got to make sure that everybody's right up front. And there's certain guys who don't want that responsibility. But he has the physical skill set to play center. But he's also got the personality. He, he's got the leadership qualities. He's got the communicative qualities that it takes to play that position. And I think if you spoke to any offensive line coach, they would tell you the same thing. It's much more than just a physical skill set. Thank you.